Happy holidays! I'm Trent Musho from The Brew Show, and in today's episode, I'm sending Martin from the Homebrew Challenge a mystery brew box. Stick around to see how it turns out. The idea behind this mystery brew box is that each brewer would send three ingredients to the other person for them to brew with. The catch is that two of the ingredients must be beer related, like hops, yeast, and grains, but the third ingredient must be a wild card, something that's not brewing related that would challenge the brewer to get creative. And since it's the holidays, this item should be festive in some way. So in my mystery box, I put eight ounces of special bee, one ounce of Willamette and hops, and for the special ingredient, well, you'll just have to head over to Martin's video to see what that is. Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi. I placed the letter in the box and sent it off, and then waited until Martin's box arrived. All right, look what just arrived. Package from Martin. All right, here we go. But first up, we got some hops, some Tetanang hops. Okay, all right. And then I see some grains here. Eight ounces of English brown. Okay, now here comes the curveball. Werther's Original Candies. Wow, you know those hard candies that you get from like your grandma? So, <laughs> this will be interesting. I gotta think about how I wanna combine them. Trying to get me inspired to do an English beer. Hopefully I can make Martin proud. So after some brainstorming, I came upon the idea for a relatively strong British beer that'll be a nice winter warmer. When I tried the hard caramel candies, I got more butterscotch than anything. Which if you're familiar with off flavors, butterscotch in beer can be perceived as diacetyl, a nasty off flavor. But as I found in my caramel apple hard cider video, it can work, as long as there's some restraint used. So with that in mind, the concept of my beer was inspired by another winter alcoholic beverage, hot buttered rum. Using the Werther's, a bit of spice, and a touch of molasses, I think we can get there. Let me show you how I made it. For this recipe, we're making a two and a half gallon batch using the brew in a bag method. As always, I'll have the recipe and the products I use in the description box. To start, I heated three and a half gallons of distilled water up to 158 degrees. To the water, I'm adding some adjustments to improve the flavor. Here's the water profile I'm aiming for. Once the water is heated up, I add the grain bag and then the grains. I'm going for a fairly simple grain bill. 84% Maris Otter, a classic British pale malt, and then 8% brown malt, which I received from Martin. And to me, it adds a nice, nutty, and slightly roasted flavor to the beer. Finally, the last 8% will come in the form of molasses at the end of the boil, just the regular, unsulfured kind. But I'll talk a bit more about that later in the brew day. I plan to mash at 152 for 45 minutes. I give the grains a good mix and cover them up. After the 45 minutes, I pull the grains. I then squeeze as much water out of the bag as possible, since this is a smaller batch and every bit counts. Then I bring the wort to a boil for 30 minutes. At the start of the boil, I add a half ounce of magnum to give us a nice punch of neutral bitterness. Then with 10 minutes left, I add in ingredient number two, the one ounce of tetanang. My hope is that this shorter boil will accentuate more of the tetanang flavor and aroma, which is said to be a bit spicy. In total, my IBUs should be right around 41. Once the hops are in, I also added a wort chiller and a wort tablet to aid in clarity. Then at the end of the timer, I turn off the heat and add in the molasses. Molasses will do a few things for your beer. It'll boost the fermentable sugars by a bit, add some dark color impact, add some bitterness, and add some complexity to the finished beer. Some claim that molasses, or black treacle, if you can get your hands on it, adds an aged character to your beer which could be nice for a larger gravity beer. Once it's all in and fully dissolved, I turn on the wort chiller to cool down and then transfer into the fermenter. At that time, I also take an original gravity reading, which I got 1.069. For yeast, I'm going with Saf Ale SO4 English Ale Yeast. I always seem to have a bit on hand and I figured it would work great here for this English inspired beer. I sprinkle the yeast in and then let this ferment around 67 degrees for two weeks. I found that the higher gravity and the different types of sugars needed a little bit more time to fully ferment out. While that ferments, let's talk about the final special ingredient Martin sent me, caramel hard candies. 
Taking a look at their ingredients, one component stood out to me, butter. Butter, or any fats, can do some weird things to your beer, one of which is ruin head retention and mess with the mouthfeel, making it feel oily or slick on the tongue. So I figured the best way to extract the caramel butterscotch flavor would be to do a tincture. I had initially thought about adding some spices in the boil, but held off since I had the idea of using a spiced rum instead for this very purpose. This particular spice rum has notes of clove, vanilla, and a touch of cinnamon, all of which would be amazing in a buttered rum cocktail. So why not use it for this tincture? I started by unwrapping the candies one by one. In the end, I think I used about 25 Werther's. Then I just poured some Captain Morgan to cover the candies. I gave it a quick stir, added a napkin on the top to keep anything out, and then set it on the counter for the rest of fermentation. By the next day, things were looking interesting. The butter had completely separated out from the alcohol. I decided to spoon out the buttery sugar liquid on top to keep behind just the infused alcohol. It took a few days to get most of it out, but eventually I did. And just as fermentation was wrapping up, I added in the tincture. Using my trusty UK shot glass in honor of Martin, I poured in five ounces of the tincture and let it rest for another few days, just to let any of the sugars from the candies ferment out. Finally, at the end of two weeks, I took a final gravity reading and got 1.012, meaning this one comes in at about 7.6%. We officially have beer. And taking a taste, it was really complex and interesting. I was dying to get this under pressure and sent to Martin as quickly as possible. So I transferred it into a keg and burst carbonated at 40 PSI for 24 hours before reducing the pressure down to 10 PSI. At which point, I packaged a few bottles up and shipped them off to Martin. Oh, hey Martin, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you. You are looking very in the holiday spirit. Just a, just a touch, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I really want to thank you for joining me on this challenge. You know, when we first did our Sati video not too far back, I had always wanted to work with you again. And in the back of my mind was this mystery box idea where some of the ingredients are beer related and some of them might not be. And I'm really glad that you said you were willing to be put to the test here. <laughs> And this time I'm a little less nervous. Like when we tried the sati, I was like, what the heck is this raw beer that we've brewed? <laughs> I'm looking forward to this one. Let's go ahead and pour up the beer that I brewed. Yeah, no, I mean, first of all, just shout out to this awesome label. Love it. Yeah, so basically I wanted to give you something maybe a little bit English, which was how I ended up the Werther's Originals. All right, so let's take, I mean, this looks like a liquid Werther original. Look at that color. <laughs> And you also sent me brown malt. Yes. And uh, yes. tetaning, right? That's right, yep. In addition to the brown malt, I also used uh, a good fair amount of Maris Otter. And then at Flame Out, I used um, some molasses, about eight ounces of molasses. When I ate the candy, I got like this almost butterscotch more than caramel was the flavor I was getting. Yep. So in order to kind of get the caramel flavor out of the candy, what I decided to do was do a tincture with rum. Oh my. Goodness, I cannot wait to try this. Captain Morgan's. So, I can't smell that on the aroma, but I can definitely smell just sort of the English qualities of this, the Marisata um, malt. Yeah, and I think the molasses is definitely coming through it, but it does add that kind of almost aged yeah. nuance there. Yeah, yeah, the molasses really coming through. And then, so this is, yeah, the, the style is British strong. Uh, 7.6%, <laughs> so uh, all of those sugars you were putting in there were uh, getting consumed. Well, can we give it a try? Let's give it a try. Cheers. Cheers. Initially, I'm getting a lot of the sweet, almost uh, the molasses. I feel like it's the first thing. Yep, you can you can taste that. It's not quite sweet. It's definitely sweet, but then, I mean, I think that's what you'd expect from this sort of style. But I don't know, I'm picking up something else as well. I'm, it may be the rum. Yeah, yeah. It has this light spice note. I feel like, um, mm. mm -hmm. like I said, I was really tempted to add in spices, but I'm glad I didn't because it, it just like a hint of it enough that like gives you uh, some warming. Warming is, that's a very des very good descriptor. Yeah, cozy in your, you know, California, Southern California. It must be freezing out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but had this actually been really a cold day, this would just be a perfect tonic for that. 
I'm so pleased though that it doesn't taste like a Werther's original, like <laughs> just sort of a caramel bomb or something like that, or a butterscotch right. bomb as you say, it's really butterscotch. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is not like that at all, and I was a little concerned when I sent you the ingredients that <laughs> that may be an inevitable consequence. Right. So just just to actually bring a bit of spice into this, a bit of sweetness, um, and not be butterscotchy and caramelly. Um, no, that's that's really nice. No, doing this has been really fun, and I see how coordinated we've been throughout. I mean, we're drinking three thousand miles apart with the same. Glass. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> I mean, great minds think alike. <laughs> right. Now this is this is the sort of guys you've got to have for a, a British strong. Yes, I thought this. so too. <laughs> this has been so much fun, and I mean, I just didn't know like, how far I could push you, and I ended up giving you something harder, I think, than I had even realized because of the butter content. Um, but it just goes to show. I mean, I was this like walking down the grocery store aisle, uh, like, hmm, what would go good in a beer, and then pick something that wouldn't. And you still made it work. So I think that just goes to show that with a little bit of creativity, you can still create a beer that is absolutely delicious from sort of very non-traditional ingredients. And I appreciate you going hard on me. I, I was glad to see something a bit of a challenge. You know, coming from the homebrew challenge, you know, it's always appreciated. And if you want to see the beer that Martin made using the ingredients I gave him, be sure to head over to the homebrew challenge to check it out. Cheers and happy brewing. Cheers. Hi, I'm Trent Musho from The Brew Show and happy holidays. In today's, I almost said happy on today's. I did, it's the holidays. He'll brew a beer and I brew a beer. <laughs> <laughs> He'll brew a beer and I brew a beer. <laughs> <laughs>